I see it as a new frontier of science. Um, it is only relatively recently that we recognized uh, that aging is under biological control and it is something that is actually amenable uh, to interventions and potentially treatments. For us, it is really about the quality of life. It is not living to age 100 or 120 and spending you know, 20 to 30 years of one's life dealing with disabilities or chronic diseases. It is really about maximizing the healthy uh, portion of one's life. So maximizing health span rather than lifespan. So if one only lives to be 80 or 90, as long as those 80 or 90 years are high quality years where an individual is free of age-related diseases and disability and can enjoy their life to the fullest, that is really our goal. So one of the factors that we were particularly interested in were the growth hormone levels. So our work in adults who are age 65 and older has shown that having lower levels of growth hormone has been associated with longer survival, fewer comorbidities, meaning they are less likely to develop diseases such as cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, or cognitive impairment. So we have several theories um, to try and explain um, the reasoning for it. As one ages, the organism really needs to shift from growth to maintenance, right? And that would make a lot of sense. When we're younger, when we're children, we're putting in a lot of energy to grow taller, to grow stronger, to get bigger. But once one begins to age, the body experiences damage to the organs and to the cells, and it becomes really important to correct that, to maintain a normal cell function and organ function. And the growth hormone actually prevents the cells from optimizing maintenance mechanisms because it shifts all the energy into growth. And actually reducing the levels of growth hormone uh, will shift the cell resources towards maintenance rather towards growth. And we believe that may be one of the processes uh, why older individuals uh, benefit from having lower levels of growth hormone. This is contrary to you know, a lot of advertising that goes on that tries to sell growth hormone to older adults. And their reasoning is, well, you know, your growth hormone levels decline as you age. It must be bad for you. It must be driving aging. But all the evidence we have to date uh, really supports the fact that older adults should not be taking uh, growth hormone uh, for the purpose of delaying aging or treating age-related diseases. And in fact, it may raise the risk of um, diseases like cancer and possibly even cognitive um, problems um, and cardiovascular disease. So we're particularly focused on the role that growth hormone may have in cognitive aging or in development of Alzheimer's disease and dementia. There's a cellular process called autophagy, which helps clear cells from debris or accumulated cellular garbage in simple terms. And this process has been shown to be really important in maintaining um, cellular function. And when it gets disrupted, um, the cells don't do well, as one can imagine. And this disruption of autophagy has been implicated in many neurological diseases, including Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. And we have evidence that shows that having less growth hormone actually stimulates autophagy, allows this process uh, to function better um, than it does otherwise. First, we want to confirm whether growth hormone will predict development of age-related diseases. Second, we want to understand what genes contribute to levels of growth hormone so that we can find genes that may be protective from aging. And the ultimate goal down the road would be if we can identify those genes, um, then we would want to create therapies based on these genes. So it's not like 
you know, okay, these are the lucky few who have inherited the genetic predisposition to longevity, right? They won the genetic lottery and the rest of us didn't. It is about what can we learn from the genes of these people and then how can we create therapies, medications that will mimic the function of those good genes so that the rest of us who are not so lucky to win the genetic lottery can still benefit. I am. I think that it is becoming um, a reality right before our eyes. Once it was recognized that aging is not some random process, uh, that it is under biological control, and once it was clearly shown that by manipulating certain genes or certain uh, biological pathways, uh, we can extend the lifespan and the health span of animals, um, it became um, a reality for human aging as well. And I think it is really only a matter of time before we have that kind of evidence in humans.